talk about a second portion of this, this is the first part. It, it, honestly, no disrespect, but it seems like it's putting a bandage on the real problem that we really need to have more money put into education to so that we are not so low in teacher pay overall because it's going to affect the overall education system. So if this is just the first part, can you enlighten us on what what the talk is, um, of maybe not publicly yet, that about what is the second or third phase of, of, uh, of Bill 1234? Well, this is basically the framework. The other part, of course, is, is uh, you know, the teacher evaluation part. And it'll take three years to phase this in. There's really no money right now. This is you know, just a framework setting that up. But uh, you know, as, we, as we go down the road, a few years when this starts to kick in, you know, I, I'm not sure what you're asking. Exactly. Well, I mean, it's it's it, in in most cases. I mean, it's it's great to have a framework, but but you know, to have a five, a ten year plan. Has there been a five, ten year plan established for for getting education funded to the, really the level that it needs to for for these communities to put out quality students, which will then make quality <coughs> workforce and so forth? Because we're seeing a, a a lack in the workforce as well, and it's probably. Uh, a reflection of, of some of, of the lack of education that we're seeing being put into the public schools. And so I'm just wondering if, if you've got a framework, and that's great, and it's great that the governor is behind trying to promote and that, the, that you all seem to be together on this, but is there, have you established further goals, you know, that, that you're really seriously looking at because there is a good point that we make these, these ideas come about, but then because there isn't a more strategic plan place, then we fall backwards instead of continuing to proceed. Well, I think it's a philosophical discussion, and it's a, man, it's a much broader discussion that we need to go through because uh, South Dakota, as compared to some of the other states that surround us, is limited in their revenue. Sixty percent of our revenue comes from sales tax, uh, and we've got you know North Dakota and and, West, and, uh, and Wyoming, you know, that have all this income coming in from oil and gas, and, and I guess my view is that when the economy improves, then that sales tax income is going to improve, and then we can distribute it out to education. I mean, that's the key to me, for me, is to, if economic development continues to increase, then education, I mean, it's going to lift all boats at the same time. And that's, if you want to get philosophical, you know, then you start talking about, well, maybe we should have another income stream. Maybe we should have state income tax. Maybe we should bring back the inheritance tax that we, that we did away with, you know, a few years ago. You know, that's more philosophical, that's a broad base, because we are very limited in what we depend on for revenue. And so if you want to bring in more revenue, then you have to come up with different income streams, whether, you know, that's, uh, and that's a broader discussion. And, and I, I will trailer on to that, because, you know, I think you're kind of alluding to uh, increasing our revenue uh, to help us with the problem. The best form of a tax increase is growing our economy. If we're, if we're paying, we're heavily dependent on sales taxes being stated. So the best way to grow that revenue stream is grow our economy. I believe that we've positioned ourselves pretty well as a state through this recession, and we're starting to see some of the evidence of that. Uh, you talk about uh, jerking the rug out from money on some of these programs. Well, I understand the concern there, but the fact of the matter is we've witnessed uh, the states that that weren't doing a lot of things and have out of control spending in their states that are suffering way more dramatic attacks of this recession in South Dakota. South Dakota is ranked uh, every year, I think they're ranked, uh, if not number one in the top five as far as the, the most business friendly climate in the United States. And I think that's because we've held the line on, on our taxes and we've, and we've taken steps to make it a business friendly state. We don't help that by by uh, adding another revenue stream and taking more money out of the pockets of the citizens to pay for bigger government. We need to work at streamlining our government, making making sure that it's as efficient as we can, and grow our revenue stream by growing the economy. And I think I think we've seen evidence of that. Uh, I uh, come across a, uh, an organization that. It, I can't remember the name of it, but it, it was it did a nationwide study on the way states have positioned themselves to come out of the uh, out from under this recession, 
And South Dakota was ranked number one in the United States uh, as far as the way they position themselves to benefit uh, when these states start, like California and Illinois, that have $20 billion deficits and they're cutting, you know, wholesale cutting in education and, and other government programs. And we see the effect, uh, and, and Governor Dugard's been working in that area as far as bringing businesses to the state. And uh, there's a lot of things uh, on the horizon that uh, potential for uh, businesses coming to the state, and it's a direct result, I think, of the way we position our state. The problem with that, though, is that businesses that come into the state need a workforce that's educated and technical. And we keep cutting education in this state we are going backwards with our technical education and the things that these businesses want. It's not one or the other. I think it has to be both. And if we don't support education to have a workforce that is technically and all that type of information that we need in our local school district, we shouldn't be forced to consider cutting some of the best programs that we have for that because of funding. We need that steady stream so that we can support your taxes. And you're right, you're right. It, it, it's a balance between education and economic development. One feeds the other. Absolutely. And, and one, one proposal that the government does have in its budget is to start a new welding program at Mitchell Tech. We are, we are sorely uh, deficient in welders. There's, there's all kinds of job openings on the eastern part of the state. So they're going to start a welding program and put a bunch of money into it to try and meet the needs of some of those manufacturers that are in the state. Belfouche has one of the best welding programs right now in the state. Make sure that we have the funding to keep that stuff. Yeah. We've got a top-notch program, and I just feel that it's wrong that we should have to take and weigh those programs against a kindergarten class with 30 kids in it. Sure. We're being put in a really bad spot, and we can't. So, 